Good Saturday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onick with a quick check of your forecast. Things are looking decently nice for the time being, at least nicer than what we're going to be seeing as we go throughout the course of the next couple of days. Unfortunately, the possibility of getting some pretty hot conditions heading our way as we get into the end of this next week and the first weekend of autumn might be looking a little bit more on the steamy side than the last weekend of summer did. We're going to be looking for some very hot temperatures coming back our way. We'll talk about that coming up. We'll also take a look and see what's going on where it comes to, again, the heat and humidity heading out of the picture as we go into and around the forecast for the rest of the what's left of the week last weekend of summer 2019. And then also, again, throughout the rest of the forecast into next week, there will be a slim chance of a few showers and thunderstorms out there, but beyond that, not really seeing any in the way of great news where it comes to anything cooler yet. Anyway, there are some signs of that later on, but we'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. Welcome to the show. If you've never been here before, again, this is Weather Overtime, our online exclusive video weather blog from the News Channel 3 studios in downtown Memphis, Tennessee, USA. If you're watching from outside the country for tonight, welcome to the show. Check out the forecast in the blue bar scrolling by at the bottom of your screen, or again, don't forget you can pick up the entire News Channel 3 forecast available at wreg.com slash weather. Questions, concerns, ideas, complaints, if you absolutely must, you can drop me a line at austin.onic at wreg.com, or you can catch me on any of these social media networks out there. Thank you for all those weather pictures. We'll be featuring more of those coming up throughout the rest of the weekend, so stay tuned for more on that. And drop your location and whatever weather reports you've got into the comments section, and we'll see what's going on out there across the area for tonight got temperatures, wind speeds, cloud conditions, whatever you've got out there. Let's see what's going on in your neck of the woods, and we'll post more from what we're doing here in, of course, downtown Memphis. We do have a little bit of time left until the change in seasons, the official change in seasons. One day and change left. The autumn season officially begins before dawn on Monday morning at 2.50 Central Time. So we've got one day left until autumn, the official changeover in seasons we don't have, again, all that long before we see some hotter conditions that's not going to be feeling anything like autumn should. We should be in the lower 80s at this time of the year. We're not even close to that at this point in time, so looking for some very steamy conditions across much of the area. Overnight temperatures, again, we should be dropping into the mid-upper 60s in the metro area. Mostly clear skies otherwise across much of the rest of the Mid-South and otherwise, again, some winds out of the South helping to keep the humidity levels up, which we all know and love so much around here. And then also seeing, again, less and less in the way of daylight as we go into the next couple of weeks. 90 degrees where our official temperature, 8 below record high, but that's just fine, no problem there. The big thing we're seeing is this, well above normal on the temperatures. 83 is where we should be for a high temperature. 63 is where we should be for the lows, and we're only back in the lower 70s. We've got plenty of rainfall for the year. It's been very dry around here. We could definitely use a little bit more in the way of uh, cooler rainfall coming on through. Smidgen more of that over the course of the next couple of days. And also, again, seeing the possibility of some less hot weather, hopefully in the medium range forecast out there for right now. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona, I'm assuming. Heidi Ryan, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for joining us from out west. Assuming the humidity out there is probably in the single-digit range. So thank you very much for checking on through there. And welcome to everybody who's checking in across the Mid-South area for tonight. Irish Iris Hutchins got the right idea. Hot triple on that. Definitely feeling that way for right now. And looking again for some cooler weather, hopefully at some point in time. Reginald Taylor, does all this hot weather mean we will have to deal with polar vortexes this winter? Well, the polar vortex is a normal, standard, every winter thing uh, in the northern and the southern hemisphere. So will we see a polar vortex? Yes, every single year it happens. Will it dip far enough south? to give us a big blast of Arctic air. Way too early to think about that for right now, but uh, Reginald Taylor, very good question. Thank you very much for asking that one. Uh, super nice in South Haven backyard. Rob Smith, thank you very much, and thank you very much for the uh, compliments on the necktie from my mom back in Topeka, Kansas, who makes about 99% of the ties that I wear uh, on TV, so this was one of her specialities here. So thank you very much. I'll pass that along to her that you uh, like the neckwear for tonight. Nice day in Corinth. Ann Walker, thank you very much for that one. And Teresa Overturf, 
voting for a uh, postponement of the cold weather from what it looks like for right now. 75 degrees, not too bad in Oxford after the big game today. South winds at about 5, humidity creeping up to about 57%. Good visibility from I-240 in Poplar looking back toward downtown. can even see the lights of the mighty lights on the I-40 bridge and the rest of downtown decently clearly as the air has cleared a little bit from the last couple of days. So not quite as stagnant and not as much pollution out there as we have seen in quite some time. But the, from the Mighty Lights to the Big River Crossing doing its thing, looking back toward West Memphis, Arkansas, over the Mighty Mississippi on Saturday evening and a good clear view there. We do have what's left of a tropical depression over parts of the Great Lakes. This used to be, a few days ago, what was soaking southeast Texas. This is the remnants of what was Tropical Storm Imelda. So as of right now, little left than just showers and a few thunderstorms, but as this passes on out, it is just enough to drag a cold front out of Canada. It's not huge. It's not going to be giving us much, if any, relief whatsoever, and it is going to be on the way to the Mid-South, but it's already starting to slow down into the high plains and back toward the panhandles. Once that arrives, we'll see better chances of showers and thunderstorms out there, but that's going to be about all that we see for right now. Rest of the evening, Storm Tracker 3S radar is again showing little, if anything, in the way of showers or thunderstorms across the area for tonight, so very quiet on there for right now. Uh, nice night in Walnut, Mississippi. Paul Ray, thank you very much. Uh, for joining us there. Nice in Hernando. Don Oswald, two-point typeface and bifocals. A terrible thing to work with on there. Temperatures back into the mid to upper 70s to the lower 80s. Winds are light, mainly out of the east-southeast, so decently pleasant out there, maybe a little bit warm. This is actually where our high temperatures should be at this time of the year, so still pretty toasty across much of the area all the way on through. All right, running the numbers into overnight. Should be dropping into the mid to upper 60s to lower 70s early tomorrow morning for low temperatures by daybreak tomorrow morning. Now, in a decently dry and quiet atmosphere, the computer models that we use occasionally get a little bit over eager at putting more chances of rainfall out there. So it's putting in chances of rain from southeast Missouri through about southwest Arkansas, and that continues into the rest of the day. I really doubt we're going to be seeing anything in the way of showers or thunderstorms until tomorrow night and into Monday morning as that front gets closer to us. Now, a few could trigger off way to the south of that front back to the north of us. I just really don't see much of anything occurring until later Sunday night or early Monday morning. Big temperatures again. Big story tomorrow is going to be the temperatures, mid to upper 80s to the lower 90s. So not really seeing too much in the way of good news for cooler weather for the last weekend of summer out there. Mid to upper 80s by this time tomorrow night. And again, winds continue out of the southeast. Now through tomorrow night into Monday morning, that's where we see the potential for some more showers and thunderstorms coming on through parts of the area. So today... Pretty much exactly like tomorrow is going to be with numbers going back into the lower 90s. An isolated chance of a shower or thunderstorm late during the day and into the evening, and that's going to be about it. Now on Monday, that front coming through, making a glancing blow to the Mid-South, might give us the potential of some less hot temperatures again, mid to upper 80s. That's still decently above normal for this time of the year. And for the first week of autumn, once that front begins to bounce its way back to the north as a warm front, by the time we hit Wednesday, we'll have another chance of showers and thunderstorms. So the cold front sinks through the Mid-South on Monday, hovers around and just south of the area on Tuesday, and then turns back around as a warm front with warmer air pushing into the Mid-South through next weekend. There's a possibility by the first weekend of autumn, we could be looking at temperatures pretty close to record-breaking once again as we go into the first week of autumn and the first couple of days of October might be feeling a little bit too warm out there for that pumpkin spice, whatever you've got on the burner for right now as temperatures continue pretty hot across much of the Mid-South. There are some signs, not many. Some of the models are showing a pretty big dip in the temperatures right after this, but unfortunately it looks like we've got another broiler to go through as we get into next weekend. Hopefully by the middle of the second week of autumn, we will get into some nicer temperatures, say maybe high temperatures around 80 degrees, but again, that's still 
pretty far in the future for right now. So we'll wait and see what that looks like as we get a little bit closer uh, to anything for right now. Mike Holland, are we going to have summer for the rest of the year? Likewise, I hope not. I'm ready for the cooler temperatures, but uh, some of you on here uh, voting for the summer temperatures to stay around, so you've got your wish with no question about that going on for the next couple of days. Chances of showers and thunderstorms by next weekend, pretty minimal at this point in time, so it doesn't look like a huge problem for weekend outdoor athletic events, anything like that. Likewise, Friday night football not showing anything for right now is a problem, but it's going to be a very hot kickoff with temperatures Friday night. Next, going to be back in the lower 90s about the time the game gets going, so some pretty steamy kickoff temperatures out there in the course of the next couple of days. Right now, we have a couple of new storm systems going on. First one is already labeled an area of investigation or an invest number 99L, which is just north of South America. It's disorganized and it doesn't look like too much right now, but with winds of about 35 miles per hour, this could be a tropical storm as we get into late tonight, maybe even early tomorrow, depending on what goes on. Computer models, these spaghetti models, so named as you take a look at these spreading out from there, have it curving a little bit farther to the north Missing the Dominican Republic and Haiti could be another big problem for Puerto Rico as we go into the next couple of days. Again, possibly as a tropical storm. Doesn't have a name yet. If it does become the K-named storm, we'll let you know about that. We also have Jerry out in the areas of the Atlantic. The Gulf of Mexico is quiet. What's left of Imelda, gone. There's not much of anything left out of that. Jerry is making its way just north of the Leeward Islands. And again, it's still in that warm area of the Atlantic at this time but it's moving into some very dry air. So as of right now, it's not a hurricane anymore. It's down to a tropical storm because of that dry air. Likewise, this storm also is going to be curving away from the Bahamas and the United States. So this one does also not look to be a major problem. Might be a direct hit for Bermuda. We'll see what goes on there. For right now, looking at this thing staying a tropical storm in the near future into next week. Uh, again, hopefully it remains that way because, again, if this is going to be a danger for Bermuda, we're going to have to watch that very carefully. What else is going on out there? Well, again, nothing in the Gulf, nothing else in the Caribbean. A new storm system coming in. This one hasn't even left Africa yet. It is just on the cusp of the coastline and is going to be making its way out into the Atlantic in the next couple of days. As it does, it's going to be moving into very warm waters, and it looks like this could be very conducive for development, rapid development possible out of this one. Could be a tropical storm by early to mid next week, and they're already giving this a 90% chance of developing into something as it heads out into the Atlantic. So this could be the next storm to watch, again, as it makes its way off the African coast and out into the Atlantic. National Hurricane Center will give us the details, and we'll pass them along to you here with News Channel 3, so stay tuned for more on that. We are approaching storm season number two. Again, we get to the main storm season into and around the area for January through about April. Second storm season comes up October through about early December. We can get some pretty nasty storms around here. So this is something to really pay attention to uh, at this time of the year. So again, this is something to really watch. You may have just moved to this area and have never dealt with severe weather before. If that's the case, this is for you. These meetings taught by the National Weather Service called Skywarn Spotter Training. They teach you what to look for and what to call back to the National Weather Service so they can tell people like me at News Channel 3 and my compatriots here what's going on. So if there's a storm in Collierville and it's moving toward Hickory With, we can let those people in the path know based on your report. So that's why this is really neat and a good opportunity to help to Get your community ready for severe weather. So again, something to think about there. First meeting will be coming up this coming Thursday, 6 p.m. in Poinsett County, Arkansas, in Truman at the Fire Department, 801 West Main Street. The one after that will be just outside the News Channel 3 viewing area. National Weather Service covers a little bit farther afield than our broadcast signal does. And why are we telling you about this if it's outside the viewing area? Well, because we are the station that is on your side 
and we want you to be aware of this, especially if you have friends or anybody who lives in this area of Big Sandy, Tennessee. If they want to know about this, please let them know. It'll be held at the Big Sandy Fire Department, Ballpark Road. That'll be coming up next, not this Monday, but next Monday, 6.30 p.m., and a great opportunity. These meetings last for about an hour, hour and a half, depending on how many questions are asked and answered. And it's a great opportunity to learn more about what to look for before and during severe weather so you can report that back to the National Weather Service. That's the information that we use here at News Channel 3 to let everybody else know what's going on out there. Your information could help save a life. So please consider becoming a Skywarn spotter. More information and the complete about Baker's dozen number of meetings across the Mid-South, go to weather.gov slash MEG, or can't remember the three-letter code, just go to weather.gov, click on the map for this area of the country. It'll take you right to the National Weather Service in Memphis for a ton of great information about what's going on when it comes to severe weather preparation. Again, totally free. Only thing you have to invest is your time and your interest. Great opportunity to learn more in the Mid-South area, so please consider doing that. Rest of the evening into tomorrow morning, numbers dropping down through about the lower 70s in the metro area. North of I-40, we could be looking at some temperatures dropping into around the mid to upper 60s, maybe a few lower to mid 60s up around Dyersburg, the Boot Hill, places like that, and out toward Jackson, Tennessee. But those are going to be the exception to the rule, continuing to be rather on the warm side out there as we go throughout the rest of the evening for tonight. Welcome to everybody checking back in for the uh, show for tonight. Glad to have you along for the ride. Again, questions, concerns, ideas. If there's something on here you'd like to see, let me know about it, and we'll see if we include it on here. More satellite picture, more world weather, more almanac data, whatever it is you're looking for, we can't feature it unless you tell us. So please drop us a line and let us know. We'll be glad to include it as part of your weather overtime video weather blog package here on News Channel 3. We are going to be on a little bit late. It's about 20 minutes after 8 o'clock for tonight, and we're just about to halftime on the Notre Dame-Georgia game Good possibility we're going to be on with the News Channel 3 late edition of News Channel 3 at 10, so stay tuned for more on that. And, of course, I'll have more on your complete forecast coming up tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. That starts bright and early Sunday morning at 6 a.m., and I'll be here throughout the rest of the weekend to keep you updated on everything that's going on. And, again, don't forget wreg.com slash weather for all your Mid-South needs. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thank you for joining us for tonight, and stay tuned for much more with News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the weekend as we head into autumn next week. Thanks a lot for stopping by.